This is the story of one man and two people who refused to let him be forgotten. His name is Sergio Villanueva, a man who, as Mother Delia says, simply made the world a happier place. He, uh, he would walk into a room full of strangers. He got out of a room full of friends. And Tanya, the woman he was engaged to. What would you want people to know about Sergio? Truly, um, well, Sergio was, was uh, really one of those people that he, he's unforgettable. I mean, he, his, he just had a very big personality and a very um, easygoing way about him. He was funny, uh, he was kind. Sergio was a year and a half old when he moved with his parents to New York from Argentina. That's Sergio with his mom, 1970, standing with the still under construction twin towers behind them. A prophetic picture. You see, Sergio is gone. A firefighter, he and five of his colleagues from Brooklyn Ladder Company 132 were among those killed on September 11th. Their bodies never recovered. Yes, I didn't want it to be there. I didn't want him to be there as a mom, but as a human being and him being there as a person and now being recognized for what he did made me very proud, very proud and he will be remembered forever. Every year, Delia and Tanya make the pilgrimage to New York and the memorial site. This year was no exception. When you look at the panels here, you're not just, you're just seeing names. And I wanted people to see there was a person and he was one of thousands who was lost. I've done what I can to really ensure that his his picture is out there, his story is being told, that we're gathering with our friends and our family, and we're really remembering him as a person. So why tell Sergio's story now, weeks after the anniversary, weeks after the flowers have been placed and the victims' names have been read? Mary Lynn Edwards, Angel. Laura Angeletta. Doreen J. Angrisani. We thought it would be good for all of us to feel as best we can how, for the victims' families, 9-11 is not just a single day of remembrance. It's, uh, it's the day that the world remembers that, but for us, it's another day right. that we don't have our loved one. Today, tomorrow, next month, the emptiness remains. The worst day in my life, and it still is when I remember. Yeah, never goes away, never goes away. The worst, the worst thing. Losing a child is something that you can never, you know, you can still live on, but the wound is there. Does time heal at all? Healing is when you're grieving the loss of someone that you love, time certainly takes away the intensity of the pain of the loss. Um, I think time is a gift in that, for sure. Healing is when you feel like you're carrying that person forward with you in your heart and it doesn't hurt, it, you're not just st struck with the pain of the loss, like you can actually remember the person and the good memories, you know, alongside. Tanya is now married and has two children, but Sergio is always close to her heart. She spent seven years as one of the subjects of a documentary called Rebirth, telling her story of pain, survival, and living again. It's time now. It's time to let that part go. You know, it's not, that's such, there's so much pain in those words to let go. Well, obviously you didn't give up hope for a couple of weeks, right? For a couple of weeks. I held on for 28 days. That, well, well, that was my number. 28 days, I wasn't gonna give up hope. Nobody better tell me that he's not coming home unless you're from the fire department with proof that he's not coming home. Don't tell me he's not coming home. Tanya has put together a book to memorialize Sergio's life from beginning to end at age 33. There are pictures of him dressed in uniform as a police officer. He was NYPD before joining the fire department pictures with his mom and dad, brother and sister, 
friends. So this was from the lieutenant. He used to play pool with the lieutenant in the firehouse. And there are, of course, soccer pictures. With his Argentine heritage, the sport was a huge part of his life. He lived it and breathed it. Soccer was certainly one of his greatest passions. I mean, he lived soccer. If ever there was a game on, schedule was revolved around the game on TV. Um, if Argentina was playing in the World Cup, he would make sure to go to the Argentinian restaurant in Corona so that he could be with his fellow countrymen to watch the game. He loved his team, he loved uh, watching them play, and then he loved himself to play soccer. Two days before he died, Sergio scored the winning goal for his soccer team. This year, and for one year, his soccer jersey is on display in the National September 11th Memorial and Museum. Tanya moved here to South Florida to put some distance between herself and the daily reminders. Sergio's mom is here too, and both women remain very close. From time to time, they get together just to talk about family, friends. For me, uh, family, my family is the biggest thing. You know, I have grandchildren. Uh, we are, you know, also Tanya is our family. You know, she has two girls and I have five grandchildren. That eases the pain, but for Delia, the sense of loss is only as a mother can feel it. I felt so guilty, so guilty for not being able to protect him as a mom. Like, you know, being over there and the towers fell on me. And he, that was went through my mind a lot, a lot. For Tanya, there is a picture she wears around her neck, one that more than any other brings her comfort and a smile. Is that your favorite picture? Yes, and this picture of Sergio was the last picture I took of him, and it was on September 9th. So if you see the smile on his face and the just pure contentment, this day was the day that started with him scoring a goal, right, at the uh, FDNY um, soccer game. And then from there, we went and spent the rest of the day with our closest family and friends celebrating the birthday of, our, of the daughter of one of our, our best friends. And this is when we got home that night. It was at about 11.30. I had one picture left in the camera. And I can still so vividly remember looking at him through the camera and saying, smile, baby, this is the last picture. <laughs>